Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and um, welcome to my messy workstation where today we are going to be painting the cover for our Pastel Blossoms journal which is based on uh, my digital kit that I have in my Etsy shop. Uh, let me just thank you all for your amazing support regarding this kit. I am so happy so many of you liked it and thank you so much uh, to everyone who purchased it. Um, it's, it's, I mean, like I said, it, this is my very first kit so it's kind of extra special for me that you like it and that you like it enough to purchase it. Um, so I'm so grateful and so happy. And today, uh, like I mentioned in the previous episode, we are going to start working on a journal which is going to include these pages and we are going to make it start to finish. And um, what I also mentioned in the previous episode, um, in a sort of introductory um, bit, uh, is that we are going to make it a hardcover and that I'm going to make the cover off camera because because we've just made it together. Uh, I just made a tutorial. This is my ephemera holder tutorial. It's linked below for you. And so yeah, so just to save us some time, I decided to construct the cover off camera. And like I said, the only difference is that I did not cover it with printed fabric. I covered it with just white cloth. I think it was just a white piece of cotton. And then what I did, so you can see it's exactly the same, you know, uh, the, the same th sort of thing we did in the ephemera holder tutorial. And then what I did is I covered the whole thing. Uh, not sure what's going on with the focus of my camera. I covered the whole thing with white gesso. And this is the gesso that I'm using. So it's from Talons and um, it's just a white acrylic gesso. And if you're not sure what gesso is, is it's an acrylic primer that you can cover uh, some different surfaces with uh, and then you can paint over it with paints. So this is what I have here. This is the cover and also um, all, the, all the dimensions are going to be uh, in the description box for you. But just in case you're interested, the cover is 21 centimeters all eight and a quarter inches tall. It's about eight and a quarter inches, then 15 centimeters or about five and three quarters, maybe a little more uh, wide. And the spine that I have here is um, six centimeters, so about two and a half inches. And what I also have is um, I cut um, my window. So if you remember from the previous episode, we are going to be putting an image in the window and I've chosen, uh, I finally made my decision and I've chosen these watercolor um, irises. <clears throat> So I just took a piece of card and this is like um, from the back of a paper pad. Um, I cut my window uh, in this shape with a die that I have so that it fits my image perfectly. Uh, this is just how I wanted it. And then I uh, also primed it uh, with gesso so that we are going to paint over it. Okay, and the window, if you are interested, again, this is in the description box, but the window is slightly, uh, just slightly smaller than the whole thing. So it's 20 centimeters or seven and three quarter inches and 14 centimeters wide or five, about five and a half inches. So there's that. And then what I usually do, uh, oh, by the way, I'm a bit nervous about this, <clears throat> about this video, so uh, I hope you bear with me. I haven't done something like this on camera yet, and the whole process of making a cover takes me a long time because there's going to be a lot of layers, a lot of drying time. Um, so I hope um, this this will turn out as a cohesive whole. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, what I have here is um, what I usually do before I decide on the 
color of my cover and I do some paint swatches. I swatch my acrylic paints, I'm using acrylics. You definitely don't have to use uh, anything fancy, anything expensive, any acrylic paints will do. Sometimes with acrylics when they are not, um, not you know very good quality they are cheap you might want to use like double layer but that's fine um absolutely and so what i have here is i swatched some pastel colors because my whole kit is sort of full of pastel colors so i just wanted to see what i liked what matched uh would you know what would look nice with with the the papers that we had inside also i try to make sure the colors that i picked uh matched the image on the front so i went through my papers and i just decided uh what i wanted to do and i chose this sort of periwinkle um color which i made a bit lighter with white gesso i ran out of white acrylic paint um which is a bummer but uh, i used acrylic gesso again the, the same one i used for this so i think this is the color that we are going to go with for the like the whole thing and because i like doing crackles on my covers i was thinking maybe they could be this pink this pink actually matches um it's it's quite pastel as well i think it would look nice like in the crackles i like these colors too but because i i sort of mixed my uh more expensive dilution paints with uh cheaper paint which is thinner i don't quite like uh how like how thin it became um and with the crackle medium you don't want to put too many layers over your crackle medium so you don't spoil the effect so this is the color i chose and this is going to be in the crackles so let me show you guys how we are going to do it uh, Okay, so I have my paints here and I'm using Dilution, Dilution's acrylic paints and this is rose cards or quartz quartz and this is periwinkle blue and like I said I'm going to mix it with white gesso but you can totally use acrylic paint uh, white acrylic paint for this uh, to slightly change the color as you can see this is the periwinkle blue uh, without any additions and this is the one with uh, with white gesso i also have this crackle medium weathered wood from De deco art and that's going to be fun because i haven't used this one before i used the crackle medium just not this one and i also have some wax uh, in the color gold that's we are going to make some of the crackles more visible, I think. Um, okay, so let me start. So with crackle medium, what you want to do first is, with my water and my paintbrush here as well, is you want to cover the whole thing uh, where you want the crackles to show with uh, the sort of base color that's going to show uh, in the crackles so in my case it's going to be this this pink so this is what we are going to do just paint over the whole thing um, with your base color that you want to see in uh, in the crackles okay Well, this is very pink. <laughs> Not sure if it's showing how pink it really is uh, on the camera, but then we're not going to be seeing that much of it. Um, but I chose this pink because I didn't want the cover to be too dark. I often go with dark colors for my crackles. Um, so like dark browns, uh, black sometimes. 
but this time uh like because we we are working with pastel colors and the pastel blossoms kit uh, i thought a pastel ish pink would um would work well so i'm just going to cover the whole um the whole cover with with this base color um Oh, not the whole cover actually, because because as you remember, we are going to have our window here, so we don't need to cover the whole front because this whole thing is basically going to be covered. So I'm uh, for the front. I'm just going to cover the the edges because they might still show. Uh, from beneath a raised part with the window. Okay, like that. Yeah, so I'm kind of anxious about this video because um, painting the covers for me is usually just you know one big experiment i don't have i don't have a the whole thing planned before i go in with my paints and media um i sort of just think as i go so i really do hope it turns out nice <laughs> because things do tend to go wrong when i turn on my camera okay so here we have this and I'm also going to cover the window part so let me just move this whole thing a little bit like that so I have some space here okay we are going to use the crackle medium on this raised part as well I think so the the whole uh, cover looks like, well, like it's one piece, like it just goes together. Okay, again, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to make sure it's covered perfectly because we are still going to be covering it with another layer of paint later, uh, our main color, so you can fix all the imperfections. Okay, just making sure the edges are covered as well. Right. Okay, so here we have our base color. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you can see how it looks. And now I'm going to pause you and I'm going to let this paint dry or I'm going to dry it with my heat gun um, so that we can go ahead and add our crackle medium. So stay tuned guys and I will see you in a second. Alright guys, so I'm back to you and my cover is pretty much dry. I helped it with uh, my heat gun because I'm not very patient and um, I'm also very excited. I, um, I want to see how this is turning out. <laughs> so again, what I have here is the weathered wood crackle medium. So let me open this up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my cover with uh, with this crackle medium and again not going to be too careful about this um, I want it definitely on the edges uh, I like when, when there are some crackles on the edges so the consistency sort of of this medium is it's very it's like thick and a bit gluey I would say and so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cover your surface with it 
and then wait until it almost dries so that's the tricky part you you can't let it dry too much because then the cracks won't show and then you put your second um, coat of paint which is going to be blue in our case here um, and when the paint dries with the medium it the cracks uh, start to show so this is sort of how it looks like okay some here and here And I'll show you uh, also what I do to to make my covers look even more distressed. Um, okay, so let's leave it like this. Maybe some more here and there. Okay. Right. So leave it. We will leave it for. Oh. Okay, let me do the window as well. We want some crackles on here too, definitely. And while this is drying, um, I think we can mix our paints. If you are using the sort of the exact color uh, of the paint that you have, then that's awesome. You can just uh, let this medium dry for a while and start painting but because the um, color that I want on this cover is like a mixture of two I'm going to mix it and I'm using a very professional mix mixing palette which is the lid of my gesso container oh my god no I've just all over my fingers. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to move this a little bit up. I'm going to take white gesso, and like I said, you can use definitely use acrylic paint for this. That that's what I would do if I had any left <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to be mixing it with this the illusions periwinkle blue color and I'm going to mix it until I get the color I like uh, the color I kind of swatched tested and I'm also going to make sure I have enough to cover my whole cover because um, you don't want to, well, okay, never mind. You don't want to uh, like have to re um, add more paint, you know, uh, to the mix while you are painting, especially over the. Um, the weather towards the crackle medium okay so more more blue i'm thinking oh my goodness i'm so not doing this right like i said you turn on the camera everything starts uh starts going not like you planned but anyway, it doesn't matter. We want our cover, or I want my cover to be uh, a little bit messy, as usual. So, some splatters won't, won't hurt it. <laughs> okay, and now let me try the color here. Is this what I want, or do I want it lighter? maybe lighter so i'm going to use a bit more gesso okay 
okay I like it better just make sure your colors blend well so you don't have like streaks of um, white in your blue um, and unless of course you want it it can it can look nice as well sometimes okay I think that should do and I think we have enough so how is the the crackle medium still kind of wet so what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to pause you again uh, and then I'm going to use my heat tool um, dry it up a little bit not too much and get back to you and we will paint uh, paint it over with the blue okay guys so I think we can start painting it it's still a bit tacky but this is the way I want it and I will show you a bit later why and so I'm taking a white brush dipped in the color that we've chosen and I'm just going like this trying not to go too many times over like one um, spot because it's um, it may it may destroy your cracks so that's why I've chosen this wide brush so okay, I have to add a little bit more here than here in the spine okay so I don't have to go over the whole thing too many times and as it dries with the paint uh, as the crackle medium dries you should see the crackles you can already see some and I'm liking the effect with the <laughs> crackle medium for me it's always a trial and error I'm not a I'm not a mixed media artist <laughs> so well definitely with mixed media it's a, it's a trial and error but uh, it's nice I guess that no two covers are going to be the same so a bit more here in the creases of our spine okay I don't know if you can see it on camera but I'm definitely seeing crackles up here now so let me do the the window part as well and then I'll show you how I distress it even more so we will be doing some peeled paint effects okay it's definitely a messy work um, but I don't know there's something about getting my hand hands you know all painty there's just something I like <laughs> okay and so I'm taking a dry brush and this particular brush has a like a funny shape it's it's very cheap it's from like the uh, cheapest pack of brushes that I have and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this and distress it like this so you can see hopefully I will see, I will show it to you a little bit more but where the crackle medium is not dry yet you can kind of create this pe peeled paint effect so the paint peels and it gives you this texture uh, I did it on my personal journal cover and I I love this effect I really do so much texture and you can see you know the the color uh, below so it's like I you know like an old door uh, or something just gives a very nice texture and it's most visible in those spots where the crackle medium is still quite wet so I want to do some 
here as well. And when it's already like dry, it's not going to be that visible. So let me do some here. Yeah, oh, I love it, and I love the color uh, too. I love how it's sort of turning out. Okay, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> okay, it's really fun, <laughs> uh, and I'm definitely enjoying myself doing this and adding this texture here and there. Right, okay, so uh, let me now bring it closer to you so you can see what I was doing. So this is what, uh, what it looks like. And you can see the crackles from the crackle medium and these here, these um, distressed places are from my from my brush and let me maybe lift this up as well so you can see you're definitely going to see it better when it's dry and when we use some gold over it but yeah the texture is there uh, okay and I'm also loving the color um, so now uh, let me pause the video yet again <laughs> and uh, I'll get back to you when it's all dry and we will see what we want to do next so see you guys in a sec hey guys so I'm back to you uh, it's been a few hours I let my cover dry completely I used a heat gun and then I just left it for for a few hours to make sure uh, make sure all the media is nice and dry and um, I like how this is turning out. I also changed the, the, the idea for the image in the window, which you probably already know if you've seen the thumbnail to this video or the intro, but that's how that, that's kind of how my process goes, you know, so I have some idea, but uh, very often it changes uh, along the way. And I just thought this image of the flower fairy um, looked so much better here and I just I love it and uh, so here you can see hopefully how our cracks turned out and are distressing I really like the the pink cracks um, it's really really nice nothing is glued yet I also in the meantime uh, painted the the sort of the inside so uh, we are going to have our end papers here. This is the ugly stage of the inside cover. Uh, we are going to have uh, our end pages here, but um, so that's why I only painted sort of the border um, and that's enough. Uh, I use just the blue color, no crackles, uh, cracks um, inside. So, oh, and I had quite a lot of this paint this blue paint left and I didn't want to waste it so I just took a few um, coffee stain sheets coffee stain sheets of paper and I just smooshed the paint uh, with my brush all over them and I I like the effect and um, I also you know think that we can use them either as pages uh, because you can write over acrylic paint when it's dry uh, or as background for some collaging or ephemera and well the color will match the the cover which is pretty great so that's uh, that's an idea when you mix too much paint like I usually do um, and you didn't have to waste it so what I thought we could do now is we're definitely going to be using our gold wax to to distress the cover a little bit more but I was thinking I have I have these corner stamps I have these corner stamps and I was thinking we could 
maybe emboss some corners uh, on this on this window. I don't know which one I would like. These are just from AliExpress. I got them recently, haven't used them yet. So maybe this one. Mm, yeah, I think I like this one. Or this. Maybe this. So I'm going to uh, use my acrylic block and my embossing powder. I have this gold embossing powder. It's from Ranger and it, the color is Princess Gold. And my heat tool and I should have my Versamark somewhere here. Or it's not a Versamark. I have the Sizzix uh, embossing ink. Uh, okay. And I think I'm not sure if this is going to work because you know the surface we're working here isn't uh, isn't completely even because of the cracks. Move this aside. But uh, yeah, so first because this is a new stamp and I haven't tried this yet, I want to make sure it like it stamps uh, nice. And crisp. So I'm just going to try it here just with some uh, vintage photo and yeah I like it. I think it will look nice. Okay so let me very unprofessionally <laughs> clean my stamp. Okay mm, so now I think I'll try one of the corners on camera and maybe make the other ones off camera. I don't want to sort of uh, use too much heat gun on, on camera. It's it's probably not very pleasant. Uh, not a very pleasant sound. So I hope this works. I've had this ink pad for the longest time. Okay, let me go kind of even here. I like this. Okay. Now here's my gold embossing powder. Going over the corner. <coughs> going to work. Okay, you can see the impression is quite clear. So we can uh, we can take the excess back to this little container <coughs> so we don't waste any of it. Embossing powder isn't the cheapest uh, it's so so great you know the effect is so great I love uh, I love heat embossing okay so now uh, so if you guys don't want to hear my heat can just turn uh, the volume down a little bit it when it starts melting. It, it always feels like magic to me. Oh, it's gorgeous. So Yay, I love it. <laughs> Guys, so this is how it looks. Right, so yeah, so I think I'm going to, oh my goodness, and I smudged it. <laughs> so this is what I, but I think, 
Yeah, don't go with your fingers over the uh, the embossing too fast because it's obviously uh, still wet. But what I think, what I think uh, I'm going to do anyway is I'm going to use my gold wax. It's going to be fine. We're going to fix it. You know, guys, with mixed media, uh, what I love about mixed media is that whenever you make a mistake, you can fix it by adding another uh, layer of media or just, you know, you can always cover it up. Okay, so let me do the other corners and then I will show you how I fix this and how we go on with distressing our cover. Okay guys, so I embossed the three corners. I kind of tried to fix this one here by stamping it again and I think it's not too bad. So now I'm going to be using the wax and I'm going to be uh, going around the edge. I'm going to be going around the inside edges as well, so in my window. And then we are going to, to do the main cover. Okay, so again, I hope it works because I'm using quite a lot of new products in this in this tutorial okay let me maybe put it like this uh, so I'm just dipping my finger in the logs you can use some some kind of cloth to apply it but I just prefer to do it with my finger and I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing here just going like that it's quite thin this one previous one was a bit thicker so yeah like that going around the edges and with the corners I'm going to add a bit more on the corners as if they were you know kind of more distressed more worn out okay So this is how this is looking so far and I, I like it. Okay, and before I was using wax uh, to do it, or just wax paste, uh, I was using Inca Gold, which is more like, hmm, like a texture paste, I guess, modeling paste. And it worked uh, really well too. Okay, so we're on this edge, more here in the, in the corner, oh, that's too much. Right. So I hope you guys are, are okay. Uh, I know that the situation in in many countries is kind of improving uh, when it comes to lockdown. There are a lot of limitations being lifted off right now and especially, you know, we see this in Poland uh, in the past few weeks and we are actually going into the fourth phase uh, this past weekend and uh, the week after the 6th of June is our final sort of uh, phase and I hope that after that uh, I'll finally be able to post packages to, to you guys I can't wait really can't wait to send uh, you guys who, who bought my journals to send them to you okay so I'm doing the inside now 
I'm just basically doing the same thing with my finger. Okay. Oh, I really hope this video is is going to be a cohesive one because, you know, I I've never made a video where I would uh, have to take long breaks in between shooting uh like with with drying time i i like i said i left my cover to dry for a for a few hours and i'm now getting back to it so i hope uh you know it's 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 not going to be that obvious on the video that it's been a few hours okay yeah i like that so Hopefully you can see this is what it looks like in some places it's thicker in some places it's thinner and I like it and we can also with a very thin layer go over is it focused? I think so go over some of the cracks here so to make them pop a little bit just a very thin layer of this one. Okay. Maybe here. Alright. Yeah, I like it. Okay, not sure what's going on with my camera today. Uh, yeah, so here is Again, a quick look. I just added some here in these spots where we have the distressing. So this is a window part. It's gorgeous and it's shiny. <laughs> and now for the cover, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the around all the edges, so around this edge, then around the edges of the spine, then around these edges, and I'm again going to be a little, like give a little bit more of it um, to the corners. So it will give me that distressed look that I like. Okay. Okay, so let me know guys how it looks where you live. Uh, are the limitations being lifted off and you know what can you do by now and how you feel about it because honestly I don't yet know how I feel about all the limitations uh, kind of you know we can a lot of people are now meeting their friends and going out and uh, just getting back to normal and I uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm 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 a bit anxious about it. I don't I don't want it to you know to go too fast. Um but I also miss my friends. So So yeah, so I'm kind of in this dilemma whether to to actually you know, meet with people or give myself some more time and just see how the situation progresses. Okay. So does anyone else have this, you know, this kind of dilemma that you are sick of quarantine and you want to go out and meet your friends and family and all that but on the other hand you're just just a little bit anxious still to to do it to meet people to go places <laughs> okay and I'm not trying, um, by doing this with the walks, I'm not trying to be too even. I even like it more when it's not all that perfect. But that's just my style, you know. I, 
just like the, the things look kind of grungy with my covers. Okay, so now, yeah, I think I think it's nice, maybe just a little bit more here. And now I'm going to go over some of the cracks and some of the distressed spots that we have here. very grungy and very much <laughs> what I like. Now going over the spine, doing the same, the same thing. Okay. Maybe like this. Trying to make sure uh, what I do is still visible in the in the camera because you know I usually when I do this I don't have to worry about being on in frame or or something like that I just so I'm not in the most comfortable position here with this but I'm hoping you guys can see what I'm doing Maybe, maybe like this. Sorry, I'm not uh, very chatty today. I have, I've actually had a couple of rough days, haven't been feeling all that well. Um, and I, I don't know, I just, I'm just relaxing doing this, you know, this is, this is my relaxed time, uh, and I just keep hoping that I am in focus and, and that this, this poll video is going to be okay for you to watch. Mm -hmm. Like this maybe. Okay, so we have our spine and our back cover. And now for the front, I'm doing again the edges and the uh, corners. And sometimes with acrylic paints, it happens uh, that on the creases between your cover and the spine, uh, the paint may crack. Especially, I think it may happen with some paints that are uh, lower quality. Uh, but um, adding this gold wax on the edges is a great way to fix every, you know, imperfection. Or if you miss the spot with your paintbrush, then go over it with with the wax. You don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, go back with your paints, you can just cover it up with with this gold here and it's going to, to look perfect. <laughs> Ish, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, so like that. And we're not going to be seeing a lot of uh, this edge or much of this edge, but still, I think it's nice to add the gold here as well. Okay, and now let me see my creases and maybe add some more just in between here. And just to make sure I don't have any unpainted 
spot. Okay, like that, and it should be fine on this side. Yep. Okay, so there's that. And if you want, you can also do the inside. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. Maybe I will do the inside too, uh, just off camera. But for now, let's focus on the outside. Let me grab some, some baby wipes. So I can clean my fingers a little bit. Okay, and... So, what do we do now? Close this up so it doesn't dry. Right, so we have our cover and our raised part. And I think it looks pretty. And what now? This is still kind of tacky. I think it needs some time to dry. Uh, but I'm too impatient to, you know, pause the video again and uh, I think I'm going to carry on and it can dry in the meantime. So now we have our image and I used the same dye as I used for the window here to cut it out of the book page. And, oh my goodness, look at this. Isn't this just pretty and so, I don't know, whimsical because of the color and all the gold and of the fairy <laughs> it's so cute so i think i'm going to use my vintage photo where did i put it to ink up the edges of this image so that it's just a little bit distressed so you know it's not so clean and pristine in comparison to the to the grungy imperfect cover Okay, especially these lighter parts here. I'm running out of ink in this small small ink pad, but I don't know where my big one is. Sorry for me sniffing, if you can hear that, hopefully not so much. But it's definitely the allergy season here in Poland and I am suffering oh my goodness i am sneezing and sniffling so much these days okay so we have this and how do we go about gluing it because i'm not sure if i glue this part first let me just check it will i be able to place the image exactly in the window, isn't it? Mm, yeah, I'm not sure. Because, you know, I use the same dye, but sometimes when you add paints and media to the inner border here, it, it gets a little bigger. So now my image is slightly bigger than the window and it doesn't fit so perfectly inside. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to place my, my uh, raised part here the way I want it on the cover. And I'm going to just uh, trace the window so I know pretty much where I want to glue my my image okay that this should be enough and you know the image will cover all the pencil marks so no no worries about that uh, I'm going to glue it first and then I'm going to be gluing the uh, this part so let me take my glue and I'm going to to use this one so this is just a tacky glue And I don't want to use too much, so I don't warp the image. But again, I want to use enough uh, so that it stays 
glued to the um, to the surface beneath it. All right. Okay. Now I just want to be as even as possible. Let me quickly check how it looks. Come on. Okay. It's yeah. It's yeah. Okay. It's good. Now I can make sure it just glued down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Righty. Now we are going to be gluing this part like this. And here will be our cover done, I think. Uh, there is one more step that you should do. Uh, you shouldn't uh, miss, you know, when you when you paint, especially when you paint with like cheaper acrylics. And this is sealing the cover. Uh, so going over it with some kind of uh, transparent sealer. Uh, which will make sure that your paint doesn't peel off, uh, but also it will kind of protect uh, protect your cover because uh, it it gives this transparent layer so that when you I don't know spill something over your cover or you get it dirty or something like that you can easily clean it off without actually damaging the the layers of paint and media that you use beneath it and to varnish uh, to seal it you can use varnish you can use uh, there are two types i think two main types there is glossy one and there is matte one so this is really a matter of preference so you can use matte varnish or uh, or glossy varnish and I am actually using Mod Podge. I've used Mod Podge on my covers, on a few of my covers before, and I like how it works. So I'm going to be using matte Mod Podge uh, to seal my covers and to give them this protection layer. Okay, <laughs> so so hard to do it, you know, without putting my head right above the. Uh, the cover, but I think I did it. It's quite even, I think. Now I'm making sure it is glued properly. There's a little bit here that I can see. A little bit of the background here, but I'm not going to worry about that because I think I'm going to use just a little bit more Mm, of this wax, of this gold to cover it up. Okay, yep, I like it. If your glue sips out a little bit, don't worry about it, as it, it should dry clean, so you won't be bothered about it. And now I want to go a little bit over the edges of my image here to add some gold to the image itself but also to kind of cover all the imperfections and also by not being too careful about it I'm adding a bit more of a grungy look to the image okay, like that. so you know so everything will work together well. The cover, the window, the image, and it's not going to be like this cover is one piece and then you have this image in the window which is clean and pristine and just, you know, you can see it obviously doesn't belong. Our image is going to belong. Mm -hmm. I think, sorry for turning it around so much, let 
I'm just trying to to make sure I go to the edges here where where I need to. Okay. Yep, it's working. It's covering the the little background that we can see under our image. Right, a little bit down, down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really like it. I like how it turned out. Maybe just a little, a little gold here on her, on her hair. To add a little bit more shine and like magical look to it but yeah uh, isn't this just pretty <laughs> okay I love it you know when you uh, when you start with mixed media and you have some vague idea of what you want and then you see the finished look and it's not exactly what you planned but you love it anyway and that's that's yeah okay so guys i'm not going to be sealing this on camera uh but like i said i'm going to just go with a paintbrush and with mod podge all over the whole cover but first i just i want you know i want the wax i want it to to dry i am also going to go with mod podge over the image so don't leave the image out because obviously this is paper so you want to you want to seal it too um, and yeah, so b basically our cover is done. So let me show you the close-ups and isn't it just so cute? Okay, so we have our cracks, we have our embossing, some gold, some distressing, beautiful girl in the window. Then there is the spine, which is also pretty and distressed. And then there is the back. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know it's 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 probably been uh, a little bit um, all over the place this tutorial, but like I said to you in the beginning, for me mixed media and painting the covers, it's a lot about experimenting. I I am not um, like sort of very experienced in this. Uh, so, uh, so, so yeah, so I, I experiment a lot and I'm happy I, I decided to do it on camera with you this time. So in the next episode, we are probably going to be working some more with the papers. We are going to maybe uh, put our signatures together. I don't know yet. I don't have an exact plan for this series, but, uh, what I know it's, it's going to be fun and we are going to create something very pretty so yeah so i hope you enjoyed it guys let me know in the comments what you think let me know if you paint your covers uh if um or if you prefer to cover them with fabric if you found this useful um or if you have any tips and tricks for me because i know many of you guys are uh, are into mixed media and you're probably much more experienced in this than I am. So don't forget to seal your covers with Mod Podge or with Varnish and I will see you very soon in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye!